Hello, testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me now? Oh my god, the Easter Bunny ate the cables. That would be hilarious. Um, I think this is, I'm just gonna chat. Um, I can hear myself on, or I can see that, that the mic is now moving. So yes, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, I'll just keep talking. Yes, okay, right, Coria said yay. Amazing. Okay, hello everyone. How are you all? Um, this is gonna be a little live, um, a really great live uh, Easter egg because we'll cut this out so no one else sees it. <laughs> So space, you can get onto that as soon as the live ends. We can like chop out the first like four minutes and no one else will know that uh, my microphone was not working. Um, I think I had my video set up um, from recording videos and stuff. So that was on. Um, brilliant. So there should be for both people watching in the live and uh, watching the video after, there should be the link to the document. I've already put them in there. Um, so you should be able to see everything that we're going to do today. And it's going to be an exciting one. Um, so I've been working on a prompt for plotting. Um, and yeah, we're going to kind of have a little play around with it. And I'm going to try and speak slower and uh, explain everything I do as I do it. Uh, for the benefit of those who can't ask questions live. So we'll see how that goes. So, um, so if I go full width, make this all bigger for you all. Um, and can I make this, can I make the text bigger? No. Okay. So last week we begun, we began creating an encyclopedia of everything that we need to know world building wise for our apocalypse. So we worked out what the apocalypse was, how it started and all that kind of stuff. Um, we then used the, used the codex alongside the chat to really like dig into the potential stories that would occur within this world. And we decided on some uh, premises, premises. Um, so yeah, if you go on the Notion document, there are three premises, uh, premises, premises that I've kind of come up with from the, um, all the brainstorming we were doing. And if you could vote on which one we go through, one, two or three, that would be amazing. Um, and while you're all doing that, I will explain some of the new features that have come since our last live stream, which I think was only a week ago. So. It, quite a lot has happened since then. Um, so this time, the biggest thing that has um, been added to Novel Crafter is the ability to copy a chat thread. This was like a really common request and now it means that I can send you the entire chat um, without having to copy and paste each message. Um, I like to use Markdown. So if we go on to chat, um, you can go to the action menu in the top right hand corner, go copy conversation, JSON, YAML, Markdown. Um, I Markdown is the nicest way to do it. I've found for, for me being a complete novice, and you, know, you can just go paste and it, it gives you all your, your conversation. I'll get rid of that. Um, there have also been some edits to chat extractions, um, including adding the button to toggle, um, keeping everything or not everything. So toggle, keep all, or you can add things individually back in to the selection. Um, numeration in codex entries is now better supported. So do you remember how last week the timeline wasn't chronological? Um, now you can see that it goes, year, it was like year one, year 11 to 20, and then years two to five, 21 to 50. Whereas now it follows numbers. It's nice. You don't have to add zeros ahead of things. So that was a very much appreciated change. Um, existing point of views. Um, so let me go into one of my books. So you can see if you go on to actions, set custom point of view, 
if you have point of views that you've used in the past, they will show up here so that you can kind of, rather than having to click third person, go onto the character, it just kind of, it's one of those like easy, like life convenience things. And like, I thought that was a lot for a week. And then suddenly Space goes and puts an entire new update out today, like half an hour ago. Um, so we have an appearance heat map to see where characters converge in a story. I've not actually looked at this yet. So let's go on to one of my books and actually see how this looks like. Um, really what I should have done is seen how you access this. Um, you are cells timeline. Um, I, or is it review? This is what happens when um, I don't look at the, ah, okay, review. It's a new feature for the review section. So you can see here, um, so you've got like items of lore, how often they're mentioned, uh, characters. So you can see the two main characters have much more, um, well, their heat maps are a lot more, a lot hotter, I guess. Um, Ah, thank you, Space. I now see that it, the, the, your message. The, the, the time lag does kind of uh, lead to a little bit of flailing on my behalf. But yeah, and this you can view it as timeline or also as cells, so it gives you the number per chapter um, of times they're mentioned. So I think that's a, a pretty cool. And you can sort by um, occurrence um, of their names mentioned. You can order it uh, by names, uh, alphabetical order. Uh, their type, so that's made characters first, then locations, then lore, and similarity. Okay, I've I've not played with. Oh, again, I've not played with any of this. So, but that's cool that you can you can group them by similar things. Okay, um, and a bigger alias editor. So, if you have, I don't have one for this uh, story. I don't think, but if you go. Um, to aliases and you add like lots of aliases the box now gets bigger um, this is especially useful if you um, you do the um, like GPTisms um, I believe in the change log yeah so you can see that here uh, like so if you ever want to find the change log it's either in the discord server or you can find it by going um, to your profile image um, feedback slash roadmap and then you click on change log. You can also see lots of ideas for new uh, additions and yeah so there's a lot of a lot of cool things. Okay um okay now on to this this session. So what my plan is is to take our vague premise and develop it. We're going to use this um kind of in conjunction with the snowflake method, um, which I'm kind of working on a prompt for. Um, I'll share them in the document. However, um, I, I will also share them in the, the Discord once it's kind of working to my, kind of what I want it to do. Um, the snowflake method is what I've always used, like pre-AI um, for plotting my stories. And I kind of wanted to see how I could push that um, and, and get it going for uh, use with AI. Um, and then we're going to use this in conjunction with our codex in order to bounce ideas off each other and kind of use the plot to help world building, but also world building to help plot. Um, so the Snowflake method, um, does, devised by Randy Ingemanson, is basically like, it's a structured approach. Um, have I included a link here? Uh, no, let me, let me include a link to his... Uh, Think. I've included a link now to the original article. Um, so it's a, like a structured approach where you go from kind of the basic premise and then gradually expand into a more and more detailed outline. Kind of um, depending on how far you go, um, you can go from to like even writing the beats for the entire story prior to starting to write it. Like if you go
So yeah, so step nine, um, begin writing a narrative description of the story. Take each line of the spreadsheet, expand it into a multi-paragraph description of the scene. Put in any cool lines of dialogue, sketch out the essential conflict of the scene. This is basically beats. So the snowflake method takes you from like literally your brain dump into the beats that you need to then write with AI, which is really powerful. Um, so I would I would highly recommend you read his his article and I I love all, all of the stuff by Randy. This method of course is very plotter friendly. So I'll make sure to do a live stream later on the pants on like a more pantsing workflow. Um yes. Um so in the snowflake method you have kind of stages that focus more on the plot and stages that focus more on the characters. For the purpose of this prompt I've kind of, I've um made it so that it's just doing the plot steps and then we can flesh out characters as we go along. What which model would you like me to do? Um so the the prompt that that I've been working on is is quite detailed and so I was So I was thinking of, um, I was thinking of um, using either uh, GPT-4 Turbo, Claude Sonnet or Claude Opus. Um, which would you guys be interested in seeing with the prompt? Uh, as you can see kind of here, it's it's a very detailed prompt. So let me know. Um, Oh, the link to the snowflake method. Oh, how weird. Um, I will... Hmm. It does work for me. It might just be that it takes a while to load. Like, it's a really old... Um... Okay, we've got two votes for Opus. Let's do this. Okay. So now we're going to do a brain dump vote. So there are three, um, there are three versions of kind of the, the combinations that we had. So version one, um, botanist Kira and her mentor Thaddeus Cobb discover a way to revitalize the Genesis gardens, but their efforts are thwarted by the Arkans agents who seek to maintain control over the city's food supply. Their invention has caught the attention of rebels, however, who storm the Genesis Hydro Gardens, holding it hostage and seizing control of the city's food production, including characters. Version 2. When a young servant girl named Delilah uncovers ancient secrets in the burning library, she sparks a revolt amongst the underclass workers that threaten to topple the tyrannical aristo aristocratic regime of the Archon. Meanwhile, a brilliant artificer, Nicodemus Vane, is forced to choose between helping the aristocracy maintain their power or aiding the underclass rebellion with his engineering skills. Or version three. Uh, botanist Kira and her mentor Thaddeus devise a plan to infiltrate the Arconical Cathedral and steal valuable pre-Ice Age seeds and cultivation equipment to restore and expand the Genesis Hydra Gardens. They recruit the help of elite hacker Drusilla Vesper and the disgraced gladiator Ramus Creel to pull off the daring heist. Okay, so so far um, we have two votes for version one, one vote for version two. I will give you a couple of minutes. Um to kind of like discuss this um maybe when i've got five people voting i'll then know that that i've got a majority um while i do that i will go on to only dogs left so i have prepared this prompt in the prompts menu oh my god half and half great guys um, so I've got plot and plot version two. You will just want to take the, uh, the prompt here and copy that into the instruction section. Everything else, just, just literally just copy and paste it. There's no other things you need to do. Models, we have, um, 
I so I've put some models here, but I got rid of anything that that has a low context window and stuff. We want we want the big models for this, um, especially if we're gonna make changes. So yes, we're going to chat. Um, okay. Okay, version two we have the most votes for. So that is the version involving Delilah. I'm gonna copy that. So what I'm gonna to go to to get this prompt, I'm gonna to go to select AI, snowflake method plot version two. And then I, okay, so we've got two votes for Opus, one for Sonnet seeing if we can get it through. Okay, well let's, oh, do you guys agree? Do we do we do we, do we try Sonnet first? See how it does. I suppose if I like bits of the Sonnet thing, we can add it. What do you guys think? Do you think um, we should try using Sonnet first? Okay, no, Opus, please. People are just saying Opus. Okay, well, we'll we maybe go to Sonnet afterwards, but let's try. I've not actually tried this with Opus. I've only been trying it with, what, two, with Sonnet so far. So that will be exciting. Again, looking at the chat and the delay makes things, yes, yes, Sonnet. Okay, no, oh, so people do want Sonnet. Okay, that's fine. Oh, okay, delay makes things crazy. Sonnet. Um, and afterwards, um, so I've done no, I don't think I've done any AI generation today, so I will check my open router after and we can see how much it all costs. Okay, so the first part of this prompt, I'm going to put the brain dump here. Um, so the author will provide you a brain dump of their novel idea Ask clarifying questions about their story idea to ensure you have a good understanding of the premise. So I'm literally just starting this by putting in the brain dump. Okay, so it's not got any questions. Be interesting to see if Opus does. Part of me kind of wishes I could do both simultaneously and keep seeing, but you know, that's fine. Um, Let's plop that. Well, I can get rid of all that because no questions asked. So then it went on to step two of once you have received the answers, generate high five, five high pitch concepts from the novel. Each pitch should be of three sentences. So the first sentence introduces the main character and describes their initial situation. The second sentence begins with the word when and describes the inciting incident. And the third sentence begins with the word now and describes what must happen for the main character to win the objective. The author will either pick their favorite high pitch, high concept pitch or will ask you to generate more. You will repeat this until they have a pitch they are happy with. So let's copy them there for you guys. Okay. Uh, Delilah Harris, a defiant servant in the oppressive archaeology of Nova Bezos, uncovers forbidden knowledge from the burning library's data vaults. When her transgression is discovered, igniting harsh punishment from Ark and Westinghouse Third's regime, now Delilah must rally the underclass servants to rebel against their aristocratic overlords. Um... Okay, so Delilah's life is upended when she's caught when the Archon enslaves her brilliant artificer mentor to create new technological subjugation. Now Delilah must escape and launch an underclass uprising to free her people. Okay, I kind of like that in the way that so there seems to be like a link between Delilah and and Nicodemus and Perhaps it's kind of like almost a reverse Beauty and the Beast where Nicodemus has kind of agreed to do this work in order to protect Delilah. That's kind of the vibe I get from that. Uh, Delilah Harris lives amongst the servants. 
uh, when she discovers the ability to unlock pre-Ice Age technologies from the Forbidden Burning Library, she must choose between remaining subservient or using her new power to spark a revolution. Okay, so this is kind. Of, this one's kind of Im implying that she has some kind of ability that maybe to either understand the documents or use the documents that others don't have. Um, brilliant artificer Nicodemus uh, reluctantly serves the Archon's regime by replicating oppressive technologies for the aristocracy. When a young servant named Delilah unearths liberating pre-ice age data that could overturn the hierarchy, now Nicodemus must pick a side in the escalating conflict. Okay. And in the dystopian arcology, uh, Delilah accidentally breaches the restricted burning library's data vaults. When she comprehends their knowledge, revealing the truth about the rise to power, now Delilah must decide whether to share the truth and spark an underclass revolution. Okay, so there seems to be like kind of two vibes going on. There's either that she's going to start, this is going to be like the spark to start a revolution or whatever happens then causes more stuff to happen. Um, so let's try five more suggestions. Be more creative in your ideas, please. So we'll see if this gives us anything different. Okay, right. So Delilah, a daring young servant, discovers an ancient AI program while hacking the Forbidden Burning Library's database. When the AI awakens, granting her its reality-bending powers, now Delilah must use her newfound abilities to liberate the oppressed underclass. Uh, Delilah stubborns on a cryogenic vault containing pre-Ice Age revolutionary frozen in time. After his awakening, the charismatic rebel recruits Delilah to restart his underground movement to overthrow the aristocracy. It's been more creative. Um... She ingests a mutant biochemical um, as she develops strange abilities to control plant life. She realises she can command the arcology's food supply, giving her leverage to spark an uprising. Uh, while mining for geothermal power cores, she discovers an ancient war bunker from the Ice Age Wars. Inside lies a powerful AI robot that imprints on Delilah, obeying her commands. Now with her own unstoppable robot army, she launches an assault to usurp the regime. And after a near-fatal accident in the arena, servant fighter Delilah has her brain backed up into a simulation construct by a renegade programmer, Nicodemus. In this virtual realm, she can train enhanced mind over matter powers to break free and overthrow Archon's totalitarian um, state. Yeah, I agree, Jean-Luc. Um, I think getting it to be yeah asking it to be more creative seems to be giving us things that are different to our original um brain dump um but yeah what do you guys think like are any of these sparking joy in you let me give you these um Or Triopus, yeah. Okay, well, given that I can go back to this chat thread, let's start a new chat. Um, called Snowflake Method Test 2 Opus. Select AI. What version two? Oh no, not GPT. Okay, let's see what Opus does. I think Opus might ask some questions. It does. Okay. This is an intriguing premise. Okay, what specific ancient secrets does Delilah uncover? 
Okay, um, I'm going to kind of answer the questions as I kind of think of, um, of ideas, but if any of you want to like give some ideas as we're doing this, go ahead. Um, Ooh. that is true i can ask opus to make it up um i'm kind of giving well, i'm going to give some things that i have ideas for um nicodemus um is uh at the beginning of the story um Nicodemus is the beginning story, um, motivated by his experiments and learning such knowledge, later becomes a more moral Um, what about some kind of nanotech Neuralink that enhances her brain function or something? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, blueprints for advanced technology. Hist oh my god, I hate the layout of this. Um, historical records, true origins of the um, aristocracy, a detailed map of tunnels and passageways, an encrypted message, evidence of the aristocracy's hoarding of resources and luxuries, powerful... Always with the AI. Schematics for a clean energy source. Documentation of experiments. So I'm wondering if she finds like, maybe she finds the original plans for the city and over time kind of maybe like, cause lifespans are so short now. Um, she finds <clears throat> information of a stockpile that was, um, so one, Delilah find information of a stockpile that uh, is hidden underground, seemingly forgotten in time. She doesn't know what is in it. Ten ideas for how the aristocracy means control. Okay, I like the idea of uh, let's go with strict curfews, controlling uh, food supply and education, debt systems. with those for now. Five ideas for advanced technology Nicodemus possesses. Neuralink implant, swarm robotics. Um, let's go with a device that can bypass the security in the city.
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, or even if like the the original aristocracy like forgot about it. Like, there is this, there is this. Oh yeah, or if they deliberately well, we'll find out. Maybe that's why. You know, it's there, or it's there as like a trap to catch rebels because rebels will look for the supply, and then there's there's that's how she gets trapped. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean, Jean-Luc. Okay, um, I'm going to send that message over. And let me think. Um, um It, it with the right. okay let's let's see that that's plot version two so i'm going to clone this the prompt here so i've got my snowflake method plot version two uh, clone prompt 2.1 instructions and I'm just replacing instruction 1 Um, again, it's very important to name your chats because it is so easy to forget everything otherwise. Uh, opus. And after I've done this, I'll look at the ideas that it gave. Um... Okay, let's have a look at this while. Um... Which is Delilah and Cud was a hidden stockpile. When she sparks a rebellion, she must navigate now with the help of an artificer. Yeah, I feel like I've kind of given the answers. I've. Okay, so I can see also there. Not quite got the prompting right because it's not. Okay, interesting to see what it's generated. Okay. So, in a post-apocalyptic city... What I'll do is, after the stream, I'll take each of the conversations, rather than doing this that I was doing before, I will copy and paste all of the conversations uh, when they're finished. Um, okay. Are we ready to do some voting, guys? So, in a post-apocalyptic city ruled by aristocracy, a young servant girl uncovers forbidden historical knowledge in a protected data vault. When she uses this inspiration, this information to expose the regime's lies and sparks a rebellion, she must rely on a conflicted artificer's support to overthrow the oppressors. Now Delilah must navigate a dangerous path between leading the revolt and protecting the ancient secrets that could reshape their world. Um, Delilah, a daring servant girl, discovers the lost art of reading 
in a forbidden library. Now, when she starts secretly teaching other underclass workers and uncovers the aristocracy's deceptive origins, she ignites a city-wide rebellion to overthrow the elite. Now, with the help of a brilliant but conflicted engineer, she must lead her people to victory while safe safeguarding the library's secrets from those who would destroy them. Uh, Delilah uncovers ancient technology that could uplift the oppressed underclass. When she spreads this information, inspires a revolt, she gains an unlikely ally. Now they must work together to overthrow. Delilah discovers crimes against humanity. She exposes the truth and calls for revolution, aided by a secret society of knowledge keepers. Now she must lead a revolt. In a tyrannical post... Okay, suppressed ancient knowledge and technology to main control, that makes sense. When she sparks an underclass rebellion, she forms an, an alliance with Nicodemus. Okay. What do you guys think? Which are your favourites? And now I have some tea. Um, but yes, what are your favourites of those pictures? I'll give you the pictures in case anyone's... Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Great. Okay, three, five, five. Yeah, I'm sure you're rereading them. Okay, um, so I've got two votes for five, one for three. Is there any anyone else who has an opinion on this? If not, I'll go for five. Five, another vote for five, okay. Um, oh yeah, so remember, a shortcut for, um, rather than pressing send, you can do control enter. Yeah, I was thinking that, Daniel. They are all pretty similar. I think that would be, have to be something that would work on in prompts. Maybe... To be fair, I've not actually looked at what the prompt settings are. I'll look at those in a sec. Temperature one. Just see how that goes. Um, and you can see now, rather than just lots of text, by naming them, it's very easy to find. Okay, let's have a look at these potential disasters. Um, so the, the third step in the prompt is to Step three, give the author a list of potential disasters for each novel. Each of the disasters takes a quarter of um, a book to develop and the ending takes the final quarter. These should be different options and be unrelated to one another. Generate ten ideas for disasters at each of the three points. Okay, so it's generated five for each of the three points, but you know, I can work with that. Oh, does it not go above one? Oh, okay. Um, so I feel for like the disasters. The first one makes the most sense. 
to me. Um, maybe with a um, adaptation. So disaster one. Um, so I'm going to copy this, but I'm going to add. Um, Uh, one of her allies, uh, character, I'll think of that, um, aids her escape so she can tell the rebels about her knowledge. Disaster 2. Yeah, Opus is kind of like, but I mean, AI never really knows about, or AI I, I always struggles a little bit with numbers. Um, and it might be something to do with my prompting. So we'll see how that goes. Um, who of the allies do I want? Who, who of the allies actually could help, I guess is. Okay, Undercity. Mara? Or... Oh, that is true. There is... Oh, which character was this? Um... Okay, so we could do, it could be Cephas, the soothsayer, who maybe receives a vision. Um, we could have Petra, who uses her work to kind of get intel and she's kind of like a spy for the rebellion, maybe. Um... Or, I guess, Darrow. Or the former Archon. No, not the former Archon. Okay, but yeah, so we could do like Perrin or Petra or Cephas. I feel like Nicodemus being forced to hand over his weapons um, or his research. Um, he is forced to do this because the Archon threatens, um, I guess, some kind of character that's um, a loved one. Okay, so for the final kind of like vibes, do we want to go for like weapons malfunctioning or do we want to go for the, the library's self-defences? Like maybe they're they trying to steal back the plans and in doing so they activate like a doomsday protocol in the city. So do we want to do like one or four? 
Pour une fois. Wait, number five for which bit? <laughs> Uh, Jean-Luc, uh, what is number five for? Oh, the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Okay, so then we've picked our disasters, and this is kind of like mushing things up. Um, I'm trying to like kind of like yeah, ma mash things up, and I can always ask for more ideas. Um, if you're going to like use this as like your kind of full brainstorming however I often find like when I'm if I'm writing something for myself I kind of know what I want so it all depends on how much you want to do of the the planning okay so it should then take this and now make a one paragraph summary um so in a tyrannical post ice age city a young girl stumbles upon a conspiracy revealing the aristocracy has suppressed ancient knowledge Delilah is caught stealing forbidden technology from the library and faces execution, but a mysterious figure named Petra Droon, uh, I might change her name because Petra Droon, like, r r is not very nice to, is quite hard to say, um, aids her escape and recruits her into a growing rebellion. Delilah sparks the underclass revolt using the forbidden information, forming an uneasy alliance with Nicodemus Vane. However, when the Archon threatens Vane's loved ones, he is forced to hand over his research, strengthening the aristocracy's control and dealing a blow to the rebellion. As the conflict escalates, a powerful aristocratic figure deflect, defects to the rebellion, but their true motives remain unclear. In a catastrophic turn of events, Vane's uh, advanced weapons malfunction. Delilah and Vane must race against time. Um, okay, so this sounds good. Let's be more specific. Um... Aaron Arkin is the aristocratic figure. Um, please um, also um, decide who the loved ones are for Vane and why they would make him give his research over. How are your stories going? Um, what what have you kind of what have you all been working on this week? Um, are you do you all have like a long weekend? If you've been taking advantage of that to mess around with everything on Novel Crafter, like what have, what have you been up to? Okay, I like the idea that the Archon has Vane's siblings, perhaps, like, in, you know, like, um, back in the day where they used to, 
Um, noble families used to hold the children of other noble families hostage in order to ensure that rebellions didn't happen. And it was like a nice hostage situation in, the, in uh, as far as it went in the sense that they were treated kind of like children of the other noble family. But I think Game of Thrones has it. But, you know, it's like that kind of vibe. So maybe they're kind of like, they're not in prison, but because they're being brought up like, I don't know, as servants within the castle, or like the, the, the main compound, there's kind of that, that threat. So yeah. Um, so we need to take this. Um, uh, I also kind of want to know, uh, give me five potential hidden agendas for Perrin Arkan to defect. Um, also, if you've, uh, if any of you have seen that these names are getting a bit AIE, let me know because, like, some of course, depending on the genre, I won't have come across before. So let me know. Okay, do we want Perrin to be a double agent or for him to be doing this as like a power grab or personal revenge? So one, two or four. Secretive NIMH? What, what is the secretive NI? Nim? Nimmer? Nymph? I've I've not heard of that. <laughs> A pretty famous movie. Cool. Uh, oh, okay, the eighties. Right, that that explains. Uh, of uh, nineteen eighty two. Okay. Oh my god, it's got like magic mice. That's so cute. Oh my god, that is adorable. Okay, we've got a lot of love for Secrets of uh, NIMH. Um, super intelligent rats. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, amazing. Um, four double agent, okay. Thank you, Corey. Um, Yeah, we we were all we we're all uh, showing showing our age. However, that does sound really cool, so I would I would totally watch that. Um, please move on to the next step. Um, so the next step is okay. So we've done the one paragraph summary. We're then trying to expand each sentence into a full paragraph. We'll see how things go. Or maybe he's a double end agent that then kind of takes it as a power grab himself. Like he's 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 gonna. Oh wow! Okay, it's it's really uh, numbering those paragraphs for me. Wow, Opus. Um... Okay, I like this. It's given her a reason to be there. So when cleaning, she accidentally uncovers the cash. She realizes that the information could bring freedom for her people. And then determined to learn more, she infiltrates the library. Okay, I like that. I like that. Um, 
And then her activities are discovered. Okay. I like that. That gives a background that I feel like you, you could have like a good insight, inciting incident of her uncovering this cash. Like perhaps from like, I don't know if she's, yeah, cleaning something and comes across it. Yeah. No, I like that. Okay. I can work with that. I feel a little bit, because I guess that's introduction, act one, kind of end. Paragraph three feels like there's not enough happening yet. Um, Okay, I like this. I'm going to again ask it for specific details. Uh, this is a great start. Um, please include more detail of actions and the steps characters take um, throughout the story. Uh, what is Delilah's motivation? Um, Give her one and make it uh, influence her actions through the story. Perhaps the... Oh, good idea, Space. Uh, her own um, family slash history. Um, uh, how do Vane uh, and Delilah... How do Vane and Delilah um, get to uh, team up? What is the dynamic? Um, does um, Petra... I'm going to change it to Petra Dune, I think. Is Aaron uh, featured earlier in the story? Okay, so Okay, let's see. Parents' disappearance. I mean, that is very YA. Okay, a message left by her father. Um, hinting at a powerful hidden secret within the burning library. I guess if, if she recognised handwriting. I guess finding out what happens to your parents is... that. I mean, it's quite a common hook, but that doesn't mean it's a bad hook. Okay, so she infiltrates the library... I love that it's now pulling in more characters. Um, oh, okay, interesting. So Vane saves her. Okay. I can make that work. Maybe like Vane becomes some kind of like mentor figure.
Okay, again, really, okay, and then now it means that Vane handing his stuff over has an impact because no, because she might not know why he has. Sorry, I'm not talking much. Um, you know, when you're like reading and trying to. So I'd have to like, because Perrin hasn't actually joined them yet, so that doesn't quite work out. But you know, we can. Um. Okay. I will I will copy this in case any of you are wanting Okay. Um where in the story will Heron Arkan join. Don't specify this. Um, somewhere between the cat and mouse games and the uh, Okay, so during a daring raid on a stronghold, they encounter Perrin, who claims to sympathise with their cause. <clears throat> so that does, that does give more of a... Okay, that gives more of a reason. I'm happy with that. Like, enough for this example. So then the next step will be... Um, okay, it'll expand each paragraph into four paragraphs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's saying here that he they, they find him in a... A raid so perhaps perhaps like they let him go but he's like a contact a potential um okay remember the next steps go bad sometimes <laughs> yeah we'll we'll see how this goes you know we're pushing the AI to its limits of, of taking a story. Like, this is... I would probably start new chats. Um... Oh, I was doing 1.1. Okay. Grateful day... Okay, that's setting up her plan. Presumably she would contact someone or something. Like, I feel like that would need to happen. Like, maybe she goes with someone else. Hides in Nicodemus. You know, we can see. Um, section two. Narrowly evades capture. They begin their collaboration that makes sense i think i would still maybe like 
when it when it finishes a few things that i would want to input uh one um in okay so one in uh section one please um add in more characters um perhaps a confident or delilah or um someone to cause conflict or both um two um how does uh nicodemus uh save delilah um perhaps he offers um Okay, section two. Ah, heart pounding chase. Um, you mention uh, them avoiding um, action and sabotage attempts. Please give um, actual instances of these and uh, be specific so that we know what happens in the story. Um, uh, involvement, uh, perhaps he ah, oh no, I didn't mean to press enter. Okay, well, I can make more changes after. <laughs> um, we have a keystone. No idea what the keystone does. Find out. Um... Okay, I, I didn't intend Perrin to join so early, but I'm not mad. Um, okay, they've got some...
Oh my god, romantic subplot. Wow, that is very uh, YA. Um, you fall in love with villain. Um, ooh, volunteers to lead a dangerous mission to rescue Vane's siblings. I mean, it's going off the rails, but it is following kind of what I asked. Like, I did ask it to do these things, like, add these things in. Um. I'm, yeah, it seems to, yeah, I mean, I put this as 1.2. Um, I mean, to be fair, I I don't know about you guys. I mean, it's going off the rail, but I kind of like the story. <laughs> I kind of forgot to keep talking because I was just reading it. Um, Uh, do they just kill Perrin? I don't... What do they do with Perrin? Um... Um... Capture Perrin... Oh my god, Kira dies. Um... Oh, Perrin, no, Perrin, Perrin seeks to atone for his uh, betrayal. Um... I'm going to go with the kill him. There, there ain't enough uh, people around that they're just going to... They're just gonna unalive him. Um Okay. Um I'm then gonna re edit uh prompts. Let's put Claude back down to one. Um Um yeah. Okay, so I've now what I've done, the next step is to use the save the cat beat sheet. Try and um Yeah. Um and now it's now it's back to one, it's kind of like keeping things a little bit more on point. Um I don't like that. Aaron's betrayal happens so soon. Like, I feel like there's a little bit. And then step eight, um, if we go into the world building doc, is provide the author with a list of potential next steps, such as character development exercises, world building prompts, or scene writing tips.
okay. So there are definitely some things here. And like, I feel like I've kind of got a grasp. Uh, I'm going to... Does it not add them all to the outline? Um... Oh. Um... Oh, maybe it's the formatting. Um, I don't know, space, what do you think? Um, not wanting to extract any of these into the thing. Um, what I can do is... You can see in the preview if it shows up. Um, so I'm guessing it's because I don't have like an act one. Or a uh, chapter. Yeah, there you can see it all comes in now. Yeah, I did step seven and step eight at once. I guess because it didn't have anything else to say, maybe? Yeah, actually that's an idea, asking for... Hmm, chat. Okay, um... Please analyze the... Okay, good to know that you don't have to manually add the chapter numbers. Um, just put chapter. Please analyze the... Uh, outline. Um, give feedback on it and then use your feedback to improve the outline. Let's also, um, also while I'm doing this, um, logging into Open Router so I can see how much I've spent. That gets pricey quite quickly. Um, so the message that was sent just before this, it had 11,000 tokens put in and so it was 28p. Uh, oh, and 1,500 tokens out. So Opus can get a little pricey. That is that is a little pricey. Um, but interesting. Okay, so analysis and feedback, strong opening image and theme. Set up in the catalyst. Okay, suggestions for improvement. More, yeah. Um, okay, yep, yeah, they're, they're all valid feedback. Um, Okay, I mean, like, that sentence makes no sense, so I would get rid of it. Uh, 
I'm also wondering if maybe like in the burning library if Perrin isn't there when she gets captured or like almost captured and like he helps her escape but like he totally was the one that called the guards in, in the first place. I'm not as big a fan of the B story. I don't like the B story. And I also feel like the midpoint happens. Um, so Perrin, no, Perrin is, it's, it's just because they're not um, marked as his full name. So I would probably like rearrange this. Okay. Um right, uh, please rewrite to have the knowledge of Perrin's felicity um coming towards the end of the book. Um apps at uh, some how in conjunction with Kira's death, rewrite the plot to incorporate this. Yeah, no, the Archon does. Um, I think, again, it's just not... Um, it was using, like, Archon as the generic... Okay, let's let's see how it does with this. Oh, I'm feeling a bit tired. Mm. Mm. I'm liking Opus. I wish it was like half the price. Or like more than half the price. Um But it's doing well. Um I quite like I like Sonnet for writing, to be fair. Um, so this is like the first time I've used Opus in like chat or anything. Um, Oh, Kira sacrifices herself. That's cute. That renewed purpose. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um. Okay. It does. Um. Okay, I'm gonna add them to the outline. Um, so I went to extract thingy and then I've got them here, these summaries. <sighs> um. Okay, so this is, is going to be more that we're going to need to do with this summary. However, this is meant to be a plot and world building combined so now we've got some ideas of things that we need so like okay so the iconical uh the iconical cathedral um there's the burning light so the burning library is something that's gonna be very important in this story 
Um, so let's start working on uh, sonnet. Uh, to develop the burning library for my uh, sci-fi post-apocalyptic story. Um, I think it probably, like, I find that sometimes it's easier to make quicker process with things that you aren't as attached to. Um, like, my story that I'm, like, super attached to and, like, don't show people. Um, I'm still messing around with the plot. Like, really, I should just, like, put it out there. Um, but I'm now kind of being like, oh, do I want to have, like, a third time where I completely rewrite the plot? Um, um, okay. Um... It is a central part of the story. Please create a fact file for it. If you do not understand any of the... If you don't understand any of... Uh, if you don't... Uh, know any details, please make them up. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll have I'll refresh my opus costs. Uh, if you don't know any details, please make them up and uh, provided that they. Um, I know losing an hour of sleep is going to be not good. Like I'm already a bad sleeper as it is. Um, please make them up, provided that they fit in with the narrative. So what I'm going to do now is put the full novel outline in so that um, it's kind of like, you know, so, it, so it's using the plot to help design stuff. Okay, context, full novel outline, send. Okay, while that's doing that, I'm going to play, let's, uh, let's play maths and see how much, wait, will it just tell me? I'm not, I'm not as, um, so it's only $1.88 so far that it's, um, used. So that's actually better than I thought. You'll probably get that typing quicker. Um, okay, right, let's have a look. The Burning Library Fact File. I will, oh, Sars, Sars Jean-Luc, um, I will put all of these into the document after, I will, I will have my dinner after this stream, have some caffeine, and then I will transfer all the stuff in so that you've got, um, the stuff. I don't know if you would even want this kind of, do, do you want this stuff in? Or, like, I can put, just, like, paste the chat files in, I guess, like, like, is this something that would be useful for you when you're reading it? I never know how much detail to give you, like whether to just give you the, the how-tos or if you want to access all the, the nitty gritties. Um, let me know. Oh, I'm liking the idea that the Burning Library also um, goes, um, the Burning Library also, like, functions as a bunker. So maybe it could, like, the break into the, the Burning Library actually then comes back towards the end of it. Um, yes, $1.88. For everything um, Opus-based, I've also spent three cents on Sonnet. Okay, I'll pop it all in after. I'm just gonna...
Hey, yeah, no, 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 if you guys are, if you guys are like, yeah, wanting this stuff, I will give it you. Oh my god, yeah, the three cents, like that, that is what tossed me over. Um, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do, like, that's gonna be like, what, two whole pence? Like, I don't know, I have to like look down the back of the sofa for that. Um... Okay, I'm now going to ask, please generate uh, five uh, people that might work in the Genesis library. Uh, sorry, the burning library. Um, was this secure? Yes, yeah, so the pricing structure of of like AI, where it's like input output tokens, is quite hard to conceptualize. Like as a you are using it, um, I think it's wor working out what works for you. Like for for some things, like um, like the stuff we're doing right now, we don't need Opus. Whereas if it's like a long chain prompt like with the other stuff, then yes, it is better. Um, scholar, data anal analyst, researcher, Zef another Silas space. Um, Is fact file sort of a keyword that would generate this? Um, yeah, I mean, I used, I've not put anything to give it a trigger for fact file. I feel like that is kind of like a, um, they know enough. Uh, the AI knows what a fact file is. Like, um, a lot of the internet has fact files on different, like, buildings. Like, if you think Wikipedia is a fact file, like, has a fact file, like, it's quite, yeah. Um, let me have a look. Um, yeah, they work nicely. Character, name. Um, it's then gone for additional, like, it's it's added duplicates, but it is showing. And likewise... Yeah, it's got the characters, but then it's got additional bits within. So, over-extracting, but... Extracting. Yeah, it'd be worth a try. Um, so what, story bible on... Okay, right, let's... Wait. Opus. I'm then going to change this to Sonic, because it's going to be cheaper. I wish there was like a word that was less. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing this with Sonnet just to make it cheaper. Oh, I like that. The Burning Legacy. Um, I realised that we need to find a way of putting a dog in it because um, we have not put a dog in it yet. Um, okay, so... Burning Legacy, Logline. I mean, that's two paragraphs, but I'll forgive it. Um, primary characters. Supporting characters. Talks about the world. 
Oh, I like that. The outwalks. What did it have originally? Uh, the periphery zones. I know I like the outwalks. That is, uh, let me put that in. Otherwise I'm going to forget. Uh, Um, yeah, maybe the dog is what discovers the hidden knowledge. Maybe, maybe she, maybe she, like, there, there is a dog at the Archon's pal palace and she yanks it. But yeah, so you can see that the, um, asking for story Bible, it's been very, very good, actually. Um. <laughs> wow. Um Okay, so we've got some um people. Okay, so let's let's pop some okay, uh Burning Library pin. All right, let's let's get this. Let's get this right. We've got twenty minutes. We are going to do four codex entries, five minutes of codex entry. Um, the first one is going to be for the burning library. Um, give me three other codex entries that you want me to fill um, based on what we've done today. Then I'm going to ask it to please condense the following. Remove anything redundant, but ensure the meaning. Okay. Okay, I like that. Right, much simpler. So that, just asking it to summarise, has gone from 300 words to 100. That's all I need. Okay. Um, what? Um, um, like, oh, I just want to do a new chat. Chat. Um, this is going to be general purpose sonnet again, name, um, given it's context in the story please um give me a fact file for the archonical cathedral home to uh the archon um um be Creative. If you do not know something, make it up. 
a general purpose sonnet sonnet um bed um Okay, uh, it doesn't make sense to make codex entries for things like the inciting incident or other important story beats. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess, like, you could make one for, like, the story's theme or, like, you know, overlying, like, moral message. Or you could do one for, like, um, if it's a significant event, like, if the inciting incident is, like, something that happens to a character, you could do it. Or you could include it as like a like a codex progression story edition. That could be um, something that is done. Okay, well, some things are not going to quite make this, but it's still interesting. Um, I'm going to copy it all and... Yeah, I put character arc descriptions in um, as a progression. So when you're in write, the write mode, um, you can go forward slash and then do like a codex edition and then select it for a character. So like Perrin, when he betrays them, you might include that there. I think that's what I would do. Um, okay, I don't know what that is, but that kind of works. I'm pretty sure they have to go and get something, so we can we can work that out. Um, I mean, like some things I'll probably edit, but like for now, when I don't have any like preference, um, not something that I care enough about to to do yet um <laughs> okay two more i can do this uh let's do delilah and perrin general purpose So I've been giving all of these the context of the outline. So that's basically like the condensed stuff of what we've done. Um... So next week, I am going to do a one-off on um, importing a novel into Novel Crafter and like the first steps with it. Um, so I, it's going to be completely cringe, I have a novel, a part finished novel from 2016 um, called Soul Song, which I've, I've not, I've not looked at um, since then. It was on an external hard drive that I found, but I thought it would be the perfect chance to show how you can take something um, and like do all the summarizing and and restructuring and analysis and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not entirely sure where and how, but that's my thoughts. Um, okay, I'm gonna say, uh, so yeah, so if you have any questions about like importing and, and stuff next week, either the Saturday or the Sunday, we'll have to see. It was originally gonna be on the Sunday 
However, I'm now free Saturday night my time, so that'd be like during the day for Americans. So that could be use that could be used. Um, let me know what you think. Um, very provisional. Um, maybe Perrin has doggos because he's rich, and that's how they bond. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, she's twenty one. <laughs> okay, um, Yeah, I'm, yeah, I think it'll probably be something that can be cut down. Like, I don't know how long it'll end up being the, the stuff, but it'll be kind of more a, a, this is the, this is how you do something rather than us all being as creative, I guess. Um, um. Please condense, uh, let's see. I didn't really want her to be a hacker. I don't think she has the training. Um, And I feel that's motivation, not. Food. Ugh. However, she also wants to see the best in others. Okay, skills and abilities. Okay, um, right, for skills, I am gonna, okay, so she, if she was in D&D, &D, what would Delilah be? I guess Rogue would probably be the... Yeah. Um, she'd be a Rogue. I know. If only they'd become the Archon rather than, like, you know... Him getting them. Okay. Okay, so optimum word for codex entries. Um, 
it all depends on the model. So if you're using like um, a low context model, you don't want your codex entries to be too big because otherwise you're kind of using up all the context. Um, if you're using something like the new Claude models, it probably doesn't matter that much. Um, I like to keep mine on the shorter side just out of preference, but you know, it's not, it's not a biggie. There you go, space, space, as I've been speaking, has put the exact same answer down, um, but it's in the past, or it's in my future, your future, my past, something like that. Um, uh, Perrin. Okay, let's see Perrin's uh, character bio. Boo. Piercing blue eyes and tousled blue brown hair. Uh, yeah. Uh, background, border into a minor. Ha <laughs> ha, it knows. Oh, okay, I like that, him having a rivalry with Gaius. Okay, that, I can dig that. Okay. I can get behind this. Okay. Um, is there anything? Okay, so it's it's four minutes to the hour. Are there any questions any of you have, um, about what I've been doing and like how I've been using the outline to kind of help inform the creation of codex entries and like what I've been doing with the prompts. I will put everything up in the Notion document um, after I've had food. Um, I'll put, I'll like, yeah, copy and paste all the conversations and give my thoughts on them, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you have, have any questions, now's the time to ask them. And you know, while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna have a little look at the dogs. Um, so each, there is, I don't think there's an archive on the Discord, but we could make one. And uh, there is, if you go onto each individual YouTube video, there should be, if there's an ocean document, that it should be there. Um, usually I, I pop it on there, so you can kind of go back and look at previous ones. So like last week's session will be on, on the, like, the video description. Oh, I like that. That is a cool insight. Um, uh, 
Actually, all of those, those are great. Um, okay. I could use them. They, they work. It feels like a little cheesy, the, or like a little like used, the, the Paranarch, but I kind of dig it. Yeah, why not? Um, new entry. I mean, as much as I object item, but, um, Terran's dogs. They're not, they're not a sparky. Okay, I know I said I, this was, that was the last one, but Perrin's dogs are going in, so we've actually got only dogs left. We've only got dogs left to do. And so what I would do with this, so I would actually give aliases of all of them. So if we're going for, let's go with these names for now. So I would actually give aliases for Brutus, Anya, Diogo, and Ajax all in here. Um, but yeah, this has been um, a great session. Thank you all for coming. Um, It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and I, yeah, so next week we'll do, we'll take a break from the sci-fi and do, um, it's more, it's like a really like a fantasy novel. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll. I will see you all next week. Uh, if you have any questions for me about the document or anything, and if you're watching back live, either leave a comment in the description, um, or you can um, just message on Discord. Like there's a, um, a thread from this video's announcement, and so you can do stuff there. But yeah, hi everyone.